this is the door where they entered the house, and um, the door was open. It wasn't open, but it was it was closed. But it won't stay closed because the whole frame was broken off here, where where they either kicked it in or used a breaching tool to to enter. If anything, they exposed my guns to theft. Huh. So they smashed open a guy's house, eh, looking for guns. Here's a second clip from that same Camp Flurry. I keep my guns in a locked cabinet behind a locked closet door. The closet door was open when we got home. They didn't touch the cabinet. I guess they weren't supposed to take any guns that were inside a locked cabinet. Yeah, what they did is expose my guns to theft. Um, that case is fairly secure. Um, I think if thieves wanted to, they could probably take the whole case or use a, use a cutter to get inside of it. Well, it'd certainly be easier if police smashed the door down and had dirty footprints leading to the closet. So frustrating, this case, and so evasive, the police. Joining us now to talk about it from Toronto is Faith Goldie, who has been on this case since minute one. Faith, it's, I am so glad you have been following up on this. We're starting to see now that we're allowed back into High River. Just this crazy search and grab policy that police had taking an opportunistic uh, uh, advantage of what was a natural disaster to follow some weird political agenda. That's what I take out of it. What do you see? You got it, Ezra. You know, folks are wondering, Faith, why are you staying on the story? Sun News, why do you insist on, you know, holding on to this story when everyone else has dropped it? Because as you saw with the clips right there from our friend Cam Flurry on the ground in High River, a resident who was evacuated and came home to find his door smashed down and, and, and uh, cupboards that were otherwise locked opened, uh, 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 we're, we're finding inconsistencies within the our CMP story. Why, Ezra? Because in the very minuscule amount of details that they've given us, they have told us one thing, that any firearms taken were in plain view. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand from Cam Flurry that his firearms were not even close to being in plain view, and while they were not actually seized, it's because he did such a darn good job of having them bolted up. Now, I want to show you here on your screen what you can see are four questions our CMP refused to answer. This is why we're sticking on the story, folks at home. Number one, did the RCMP establish which homes were likely to contain firearms prior to conducting the search? In other words, were firearms the actual target of their quote-unquote search and rescue mission? The rescue mission, by the way, Ezra, as we've mentioned, the boats, which didn't have any stretchers or, you know, pet cages. Number two, there are four questions here, so stick with me. Were any seized firearms in a locked room, Cam Flurry says yes, equipped with a trigger lock or otherwise disabled? In other words, if they were bolt action, was the bolt taken out. Because in, if that's the case, then those firearms were properly stored according to the legal standards of this great nation, which means RCMP had no business putting their paws on it. Number three, how many firearms were seized from how many homes? Ezra, this is a plain and simple basic question. Any RCMP yeah. presser, should, uh, presser should have dealt with this question out of the gates. It is beyond a reasonable doubt that they must have that number somewhere. They're just not sharing it with us. And number four, finally, what were the formal orders given to the officers conducting those searches? Well, I'll tell you right now. Uh, we heard from one staff sergeant. His name was Bryant Jones. He was on the ground there in High River. And he said that orders, well, there were no specific orders, that there was no plan, greater plan, to actually seize firearms. And you know what? I've been hearing a lot on, 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 on gun forums online, a lot of people who want me to drop this story, Ezra. And they're saying, you know, take off the tinfoil hat. Why? There's no tinfoil hat here. A tinfoil hat suggests that you're seeing things, you're imagining things in your mind. But we know that's not true for three reasons. First of all, the cops admit they took the guns. Second of all, we see a video filmed by the RCMP themselves in High River where we hear the crackle of their radio talking to them of instructions about firearms. And now that we're finally let in that uh, town that was blockaded, we see the evidence of smashed down doors finding the guns. It is, it, nothing here makes sense. There is only, and, and here's the thing about the lack of transparency. When you have these distressing facts and then you have the RCMP stonewalling, that lends credibility to this skeptical interpretation, not some benign interpretation, since they won't even say how many guns did you take, who made the decision. I think that tells you, Faith, you got a tiger by the tail here. I, for one, hope you don't stop asking. I don't have guns myself. 
But to me, this is a property rights matter, a rule of law matter, and a political accountability matter. I want to know who said, huh, let's take advantage of this empty town and run a little hobbies and some errands here. 100%. And you know who people who are keep on pointing to the Emergency Management Act in Alberta need to realize that the only way that search and seizure can occur under a state of emergency without a warrant well, all of those operations have to be part of a plan. It says so in the law that any authority that is going to a home and is going to, without warrant, take something from that home because it's an emergency has to do so under some sort of larger plan. Well, RCMP is saying that there was no larger plan. So in other That's words, That's such folks, a good point. Yeah, that is such a good point. It's a reminder that martial law does not equal, or an emergency plan law does not equal anarchy. It's not your parents are out so you throw a party and you, you do what you want. It's you follow the emergency plan. And if seizing lawful guns was not part of the emergency plan, then you know what, Faith? I think we've got a massive crime spree committed by the people who were supposed to uphold the law. Don't you dare stop this story, Faith, and neither will I. Thank you, Ezra.